Hey guys, welcome back. I know I haven't been on here in a while. A whole lot of stuff going on. New job, moving, as you can tell. We're in a two-car garage. I got the Jeep here, and I have it all blown apart. So, a couple things happened from the last couple videos, or they were in the last videos, like when I went rock crawling and stuff at Barnwell. I had this stuff done already, but I hadn't like really filmed it. So, there's a 231, 231 doubler in the Jeep. So I got two low ranges. So I got two high, two low, four high, four low, and four double low. And I think it's like a final crawl ratio with all the gearing that the Jeep has. It's like 145 to one, roughly. So it's awesome, fantastic. It helps out wheeling with the manual so much. I don't have to slip the clutch or, or I don't stall as much either. But right now, the last time I went out to Barnwell, I was having some issue with the transfer case and so we're gonna dive into that right now starting to tear into the transfer case something is definitely not right isn't it is here's the jeep and i have like the transfer case just blown apart right here so this is the rear 231 the rear case that's the back half this is the front half this is the plate that mates it to the uh, front case and there's the front case right there and so pretty much the issue i was having let me see if i can spin this around for you the issue i was having was with the rear case and so whenever i would shift it into four high or whatever uh well it actually wouldn't shift into four high it would be in two wheel drive or it'll pop between gears between two high and four high and it just wouldn't uh the jeep would roll and it would stall and do all that um but so it was doing it with it in the jeep with my twin stick cable shifter so what i did i pulled the transfer case out i shifted it by hand and it was still popping out and so then I knew it was something internal. And so then when I pulled the case apart, this shift selector range fork deal um, wasn't seated all the way in up against the case right here. So I believe it was pushed out just a hair and it wasn't, um, the D10 wasn't sitting right and it would like push it between the little notches. And so right now, it's pushed all the way in, it's seated properly, and it shifts fine manually at least. I could put a wrench on here, shift it, it'll stay in the gear I put it in and won't pop out. So that I believe is what my issue was, was this thing right here. But now I have a three pinion planetary in here and so I thought about swapping it out when I first put the doubler together but because I had to take it off the Jeep and take it apart and tear into it to figure out what my internal issue was, I really thought I stripped out some gears or like broke the range fork or something, but everything seems fine. There is some like marring on some of the gears, probably just because of this sitting between gears or between ranges. But now that, that it's kind of taken care of, I did order uh some beefier stuff so this is a six pinion planetary for a 231 and then i have the gear components to put in the wide chain which is an inch and a quarter i'll put in a picture of the size difference between the new one and, and the old one and then i also um this is a bigger gear set than stock i believe this is like five and a half inches wide like in diameter and so it comes with a new a bigger range fork here let me see if i can compare the two so there yeah you can see this one's bigger than the factory one so this is going to be going in, and I believe this is all stuff out of a Dodge 231. So it's bigger, beefier, meant to handle a much stronger or a higher torque output than what the 4.0 can put out. So I'm going to finish taking this apart, pull out that planetary gear, <coughs> put this one in. 
I gotta swap out this gear right here and just put the whole thing back together and then put it back in the Jeep and we should be done. At least with this issue. And then we could go about doing everything else. So let's get through it. So here we are. I got the planetary out and I got the gear out. So there's a couple step process here. You have this front cover, which this snout, this is your input gear, sticks out of. So this cover's on there. It's four 10 mil bolts. You take that off. And then you have one snap ring, this one, which sits right in this groove right here. And that holds the input shaft. Once you get that off, this whole thing slides off as one unit. And then you have this big snap ring and it has these little cutouts right here. So you take uh, two screwdrivers, kind of squeeze it, pops right off. You pull that off, you pull this off. And now you can swap this out. So I'm gonna go from three to six. And then I can start putting the whole transfer case back together. So let me grab my six pinion planetary and kind of do this backwards for you. So this one has the new snap ring and stuff in there. So we'll do this get this off of here i gotta put the camera down just so i can use both hands to get this off i'll slide this in there and then put it reassemble this portion of the uh, transfer case so here we are got this is the front uh underdrive crawl box whatever you want to call it for the 231 doubler i got all my surfaces cleaned up this has got a six pinion planetary this is ready to go I got the rear case taken apart. I put the six pinion planetary in there already. And this is the new uh, synchronizer range fork, uh, whatever you want to call it. This is my main, the main shaft that goes in here. And I already got the uh, bigger gear set on here. And here I wanted to see if I can kind of give you a, a side by side. So this one's five and a half inches. This one's four and a half inches. And so it's gonna be a lot bigger. It's gonna be able to disperse that gear load a little better. But as you can see in here, there is not a whole lot of room for this. So it fits, but clearances are tight underneath and up on top, but it'll fit. It'll make this, uh, the actual gear set and the internals in this case a lot stronger, especially paired with the uh, 32 spline SYE like output flange and the uh, the wide chain upgrade so I'm gonna get this all put together and then I'm gonna double check make sure this shift rail uh, slide guide whatever you call it when it comes out of here make sure it's uh, an inch or shorter when it's engaged in four wheel drive or the tail housing for the SYE, it won't fit. So it'll need to be cut. But I think we should be good. I'm gonna get the main shaft, get this all put it together. I'm gonna do a test fit and get this case on there and make sure that it'll, everything fits, it clears. And then I'll get some silicone, run a bead on here and let it tack up, tighten it all down and then hopefully by the end of well this video has been filmed over several weeks but hopefully this will be back together within the next couple days and back in the truck i just wanted to show you real quick in case y'all decide to do this uh max heavy duty upgrade for the 231 this is the what i was talking about that i had backwards was uh this piece right here where the uh shift rail and this shift collar and this uh synchro thing right i'm not exactly sure what the proper name is but um this i was what i had backwards i had it flipped 180 degrees so 
there's like a wider section and then a skinnier section on each side of where the shift roll rides. And so the skinnier section goes towards the back, the wider section goes towards the uh, front of the T-case. I wanted to show you guys uh, what I had backwards um, when I wasn't getting the two-wheel drive in case y'all decided to do this upgrade to your 231. So this is the way it sits. This, um, this goes through there, through the range fork, and that sits all the way down in there. So this by my index finger is the front of the T-case. This is the rear of the T-case. I had this middle piece flipped 180 degrees. I had the this wider part facing the rear of the T-case when in reality it should be facing the front. And as long as you put it in like this, it'll it'll work and you'll get two-wheel drive. If you don't put it like this, you'll just always have four-wheel drive and not be able to shift into two-wheel drive. Because I do want to drive this thing on the road, I wanted that two-wheel drive. So I put this all together. I did have an issue and I stopped recording because I had the uh, synchro what sits on the shift rail. I had that backwards and I didn't realize till I like flipped it. But I knew something was wrong because I would uh, manually shift the T-case. Right now it's in four low, but I would shift from four low to neutral to four high to two high. And when I'd get to, everything worked up until I got to two high. And it acted like it was still in four high. So I knew something was wrong. So I, I thought I, maybe I put that uh, synchro shift rail like guide is like that big, um, like the big gear that the main shaft sits in. I had a suspicion I may have put it backwards. And so then I just, I just tore this all apart and flipped it over, put everything back in and I put two bolts in it just to hold the case halves together. And I shifted and now it works fine. But I wanted to show you guys what I was talking about on the uh, shift rail. So if you've done an SYE before or whatnot, a lot of some 231s, their shift rail comes out like this far. And so you have to cut it. And so this one, they recommend if it's, some of them are an inch and a half and some of them are an inch. If you have an inch or shorter, when the transfer case is in four low, then uh, you're good, you don't have to cut it. If it's longer than an inch, you have to cut it down. And so the way they have you measure is to take your tape measure, put the transfer case in four low, cause that's when the shift rail sticks out the furthest and then put a tape on it. And if you can see, this one is just under an inch. And so we're good here. Everything works the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna go I'm going to put the speedo gear back on here. I'm going to put the oil pump back on here. And I'm going to put the tail housing back on. Do the silicone on here. Let it cure up for like an hour. 45 minutes to an hour. Then I'm going to torque everything down. And it'll all be set and ready to go back into the Jeep. Right now, um, everything's a mess right now. We moved, we're in a two car garage right now. <coughs> and so we're making do with what I got. Working on the floor, cause I don't have a floor bench. Very small toolbox. So it uh, it is what it is. You roll with what you got and we'll have this back up and running here in no time. So here we are. I got this case bolted together. I got the output housing tail housing back on there everything has silicone and everything's like hand tight waiting for it to tack up before i torque everything to spec and now i got the backing plate on for the front case or the range box this thing only has high and low and so i get to have two low four low and four double low with the addition of this to the MJ and gives me a final crawl ratio of like 145 to one, which I really enjoy, especially being a manual five speed. It helps a lot not having to slip the clutch. So there's this ring back here and then this lets you, all these holes here lets you clock it however you want or even flip the range box all the way over to have more uh, clearance here for your drive shafts but because I have cable shifters and they're all on this side based off of the like factory um, 
231 case <coughs> I keep it oriented this way so now I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna put some silicone on this put the new input shaft this is the one that comes with the kit that I have that goes in there and then this side mimics the rear of the transmission and that goes boop right into there let's see if I can get it splines lined up yep so that goes in there and if you can imagine that range box sits right here and that's all there is to it and I'm gonna bolt this back up together let it tack up and then let it sit for 24 hours before I fill it back up with fluid but in that time I'll have a, a time lapse of me throwing it back in the in the MJ well I got the doubler rebuilt I just got it put back in the Jeep um, I didn't film just because it was a whole ordeal and I mean it still is I had to call a buddy over ask him to help me bench press this doubler into here the rear cross member that supports the back of the doubler wasn't fitting right I had to cut it and sleeve it and it's getting welded tomorrow just so I know for sure I mean it's sturdy and it's tight in there right now but let me flip you guys around and show you what I'm talking about I built this a while ago it uses a uh, Northwest Fab like Atlas rear output ring and has this piece of DOM with rubber on here and I built this with these quick connect couplings and so I was able to get this side bolted up originally and then my issue was with this side I couldn't get I couldn't get this side bolted up for the life of me it was like off by about that much about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch and so what I originally thought was that this pipe was bent or something or something happened in the removal and install of this T case that this coupling didn't line up anymore. And I could either get one side to line up, whether it be the driver's side or the passenger side, I either get one side to line up or both of them will be off by a little bit. So I made the executive decision. I took my angle grinder, cut this right here and bolted this side in and there's a piece of pipe in there. I don't know if you can see it. So I found, I had a piece of scrap pipe that fit in here perfectly. So there's a piece of pipe that goes from here to about here. It's about 10 inches. And I mean, it's a little overkill. It didn't have to be that long. It could have been about like this long, but that gives it some strength. I mean, it's not going anywhere right now, but tomorrow this gap right here is going to get welded up and I'm going to make sure that these fit properly before we weld it just so we know for sure so at the next time I have to take this out or service it or whatever happens I don't have to deal with uh, these couplings not lining up so that's why I didn't film this didn't time lapse it just because it's been a whole it's been a process let's just leave it at that it's been a process but now that it's all back in here my cable shifters are bolted up, drive shafts bolted up, uh, the cases are full of fluid. Now I'm just letting it sit, checking for leaks, but it looks good so far, so that's a plus. Um, taking this over to my buddy's shop, just cause I don't have a welder yet, I need one. It's on my list of things to do, but we're gonna get this welded up real quick. It's gonna take literally five minutes. And so there it is, the uh cross member now is all welded up everything goes in the way it's supposed to. everything's keyed in properly i haven't put the skid plate back on just because i'm checking for any leaks out of the uh t cases in the range box and um i know that this thing's too close it makes noise while you drive i gotta change the exhaust hangers but besides that it's all back together it's working great it's shifting through the ranges in the cab just fine and now the next thing would be just to go out wheeling and see how it does and hopefully it doesn't break again because i i don't know what i'd do if it breaks again but yeah just checking for any leaks i'm gonna slap the skid plate back on before i go wheeling again and then we should be good to go thank you guys for tuning in and see you next time